Hello again. Kate Brown Pernia for Why Not a Hat? Well, summer is coming to an end and I've started thinking about fall a little bit. And the other day I was in a home goods store and I spotted these beautiful Turkish hand-blown glass bowls. And I thought, why not a hat? So let me show you how I made the one I'm wearing today. Let's focus the camera on the table. People often ask me how I come up with my shapes for hats. And as I showed you, I spot them everywhere. And when I see a nice bowl that could make a hat, I go for it. So let me talk to you about how I did this one. I chose the smallest bowl because I thought it would make a nice little cocktail size hat. Um, and what I did was I covered my bowl with cling film or saran wrap, we call it. And then I just put it on my headlock and put a couple of pins in here just to sort of hold it in place. And the next thing I did was I took not this piece, but a larger piece of buckram, which is that cotton uh, woven fabric, heavily starched. And I stretched the, I, I took my spray bottle and sprayed it wet, sprayed the buckram wet, and pulled it over my glass bowl, and then used my little clippies to hold it in place all over. And then once I got the buckram smoothed over the form, I then got a piece of cotton flannel, spray painted that, and put that on top. So as you see, here's what I ended up with. My buckram's on the bottom, and my flannel's on the top. The first hat I did, I did ex exactly the opposite. The first hat, first try, was I put the flannel on first and then the buckram. And then I discovered that the hat, the shape of the hat was not going to look as pretty facing down as facing up. That's in the one that I'm wearing. So I did it again. And this time, I did it the way I just showed you. I put the buckram on the bottom and then the flannel on top. But I'm going to show you what I did for the next step using the, the one that I had made a mistake. Now, I want to talk about making mistakes. Mistakes are a good thing because when you make a mistake, you usually learn from that. And that's a, that's a very valuable experience when you're learning something like millinery. So here's the one that I did backwards. And so this time, on this in this case, I have flannel on both sides, but you don't really need it on both sides. You only need it on the side that's going to end up being the lining of the hat, as in this. So, anyway, not to waste anything, I used my mistake one and just did the flannel on the other side again. Then the next step is to sew your number 21 inch, which is the lighter weight wire, all the way around the edge after you've taken your scissors and trimmed all the extra fabric and buckram off the edge. You stitch your um, wire on the edge of the hat using a buttonhole stitch. And I've shown you this in other videos. I'll put a link in here so you can go back and review that if you need to. Uh, the trickiest part of making this hat is sewing this wire on. It's because you have all these little nooks and crannies in the leaf and you have to sort of ease the wire onto the shape as you go. And it's a little tricky, especially when you have arthritic old hands like I have, but you're probably not in that situation. Anyway, once you get the wire on, you want to then cover the wire with something decorative. And so what I did was I cut a, a one inch strip of bias cut cotton and I used my needle and thread and just hand stitched that edge to what's going to be the underside of the hat, like this. 
the underside of the hat. I just stitched it in a quarter of an inch all the way around the hat like this so we can fold it over like this. Let me just clip it so you can see how it's going to go. Which gives you this nice finished edge on the inside of your hat. You see? Like this. Now, I pretty much finished sewing this on just to save us some time, but I'm going to just take the last few stitches here for you to see. I hope you can see what I'm doing. I um, could have done this on the machine, but um, I have an old S Singer Featherweight, and I, uh, I figured it would be probably pretty hard to maneuver all the nooks and crannies and the wire bends in my machine and get a decent stitch. So I opted to go uh, do some hand stitching. And you can do it either way, whatever works best for you. But as we get finished here, I'll show you the next little trick. And you have to sort of ease your bias around these little curves. Give yourself a little extra fabric there. And, oh, I keep losing my thread. I'm sorry. My hands are a little stiff today because I've been working in the studio all week. Where are my scissors? It never fails. When I'm doing a video, I lose my thread. Okay, here we go. So I'm going back down. Sometimes I do several stitches at a time. Wonderful. Done is good. I'll just knot this off. One more time just for insurance. that. Now I'm going to just cut off this extra and I can fold it under. The next thing I'm going to do I'm going to cheek a little. Instead of stitching this down I'm going to make it quicker by just folding and gluing it down. So I take my Fabri-Tac glue and just put a few drops along, along that stitching line that we just did. This isn't going to show because we're going to put a cover on this. I do only a few inches at a time because this glue dries quickly. You want to press it down over the glue and hold it with your magic clips here. It will dry quickly. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you get the idea. I'm just folding this down over the edge, over the wired edge, clipping it until it dries, which is only a few minutes. And as you see on the bottom side of the hat, then you have a nice finished edge. Now, what are we going to do to cover the top? Well, let me show you what the next step is. This is kind of exciting and fun. I took my glass bowl 
and I traced around the bowl on the piece of brown paper like this and added several inches around the outside edge. And I cut another piece of that brown flannel big enough to accommodate that pattern that I just made. And then, because what we're going to do is we're going to do a fabric collage to cover the top of the hat, which is what makes it so pretty. Now, what you want to do is you want to have extra fabric on the outside edges because the way this collage works, and I think I've mentioned this before, but I'm going to mention it again because this is a great book. I learned this collage process by taking a workshop from Rosemary Eichhorn and I bought her book. And this is a lot of fun if you want to play with this technique. It's full of wonderful techniques for doing collages. And of course, I do them on hats all the time. So anyway, that's a good recommendation for you. What you do is with your flannel is you just take pieces of fabric in the colors that you want for your collage and just pin them to the fabric in a, in a, um, a pleasing manner, something that will appeal to your own senses. Now you can cut out motif. For example, I wanted a little extra flower, so I cut an extra one out here. You don't have to worry about the edges because what we're going to do is stitch, and then you're going to put this whole, once you finish with your stitching, you're going to throw this in the wash with a couple of towels. Wash it, throw it in the dryer, and dry it, and it will shrink up with lots of texture. And then you can cut off all, any stray random threads that are in your way. But let me, let me just show you how we play with the sewing machine to get that effect. Now, if you have a modern machine, you can drop the feed dogs in your machine. The feed dogs are the little, the little, um, I can't think, uh, teeth, I guess. Teeth would be the word that will pull your fabric through the machine. Well, this is a 1930s Singer Featherweight, and it doesn't have the ability to drop the feed dogs. So what I do is I just cover the feed dogs with a piece of cardboard and just um, use duct tape to, I'm not duct tape, but the masking tape to hold the cardboard in place. And of course, I punched a little hole so that there's a place for my needle to go through. Now for fabric collage, you need an open-toed foot. I don't know if you can see it. I'll try to hold it up there. So what you do then, if you just free motion stitch, This is covered in great detail in this book, which I recommend you get. But as you can see, I just take a few stitches, get that thread out of my way, and then you just, instead of the feed dogs moving the fabric, you have to move it with your own hands. But you can do, you can go around in circles, you can make, whoops, I've got a, a caught thread here. Let me just clip it so that it, gives me the ability to move. Okay, here we go. You can then move, move your machine around, you see, and you can create forms, all kinds of fun things. You can go around your motifs. So you just play with that and have lots of fun. And what you end up with is a lovely collage like this. After you've washed it, put it through the dryer, then you place it on your form, on this part of your form, and just tuck under the edges and stitch it, stitch it to that little edge that you have already glued onto your hat. So that's how the hat is made. Now I stuck a little elastic in there, but you can do a wire, um, spring a later kind of uh, rigging, if you wish. I've got some videos on how to do that as well. And um, what I did for trim was I took these, a few of these wonderful reeds that I found in a craft store in the floral department. And I just clipped off some of them, wrapped them in a piece of fabric, and stitched the fabric at the edge of the hat on the right-hand side. So, 
Play around with this technique. Fall's a good time to experiment with all the wonderful colors that are out there in nature. So have fun. And why not a hat? <laughs>